Hey guys, so it's pickling season, and by that I mean like pickling cucumber season, and this is the moment that many of us have been waiting for. So um, when a lot of people think of pickles, they think of pickled cucumbers, like with dill and garlic, and those are delicious and I can't get enough of them. Um, but also pickling is like a wide, way broader category and that it can mean lots of different kinds of preserving. So in terms of fermenting pickles, yes, you can ferment um, turnips and parsnips even, and carrots and and uh, dilly beans, I'm, I'm running running out, but you can pickle almost anything that you can eat raw. Um, but here, the pickling cucumbers tutorial is gonna be slightly different because there are a few more tips that I wanted to um, pass on to you about how to keep your pickles crunchy. So um, first thing is get your pickling cucumbers in perfect condition. So um, these ones are seasonal in my area from like May till almost September. Um, but you want to make sure that they are perfect pickles. If you have any little um, uh, kind of bad bits on them, that one pickle will actually ruin, one cucumber will ruin the whole jar. So get them in really good condition. Um, when you get them home, wash them really well. They tend to be quite sandy. And wash them in very, very cold water. If they're anything less than just picked off of the vine, they need to be kind of livened up and rehydrated. So um, put them in very cold water for a couple of hours um, or at least an hour. And then here's a trick I want to show you. Just got my knife here. So obviously there's two ends to a cucumber. This end is the end that was picked from the vine. You'll have to inspect it a little bit. I know it's a bit fuzzy. This end is the end that the flower grew on. So if you're a gardener, this will be pretty obvious to you. Um, you'll be like, oh, okay, stem end, I get it. And then um, if you're not a gardener, you might have to inspect it a little bit more. But the stem end looks a little bit more fibrous and the flower end has just a tiny little dot on it. Um, sometimes it will actually have a flower attached and that will give you a good hint. But if it doesn't, just a tiny dot. So um, this is a trick I learned very recently that if you, just take a little bit of the the flower end off, your pickles will remain crunchier. And that's because there are enzymes in the flower which actually digests the cucumber and makes it a softer cucumber. So take time to trim that end, the flower end, just a tiny, tiny bit. You don't need to take very much off. So other than this, what you're gonna need is uh, if, like dill and garlic. Um, I use flowering dill when I have it. Uh, fresh dill is just fine too. Um, I've even used, like here, I actually started drying a batch of dill. And then it's like partially dried. And then I realized, oh, this is my last chance to get pickling cucumbers, so I need to do this now. So I'm using a partially dried dill with some fresh tarragon I have, and, and I've put some pickling spices in the bottom. Um, one tip to keep the pickling spices from floating to the top is that if you take an unbleached tea bag and put all your pickling spices in there, then um, you won't have that problem with them floating to the top. I was out of tea bags today, so that's just how it is. Um, I'm gonna have to skim them from the top. The other tip is, uh, Bay leaf. So either bay leaf or grape leaf, um, even oak leaves can work, but any edible leaf that has tannins in it uh, keeps your pickles crunchy. So traditional with dill pickles is bay leaf. You can use fresh ones or dried ones. Um, and so throw those into the bottom of your jar. This is my fermenting jar. It's just a regular like three, I think it's a three liter jar. It's kind of a, an odd size, I guess, but I like it because it has the flap lid, but it doesn't really matter. If you have a nice big batch of pickles you want to do, you could do it in your four liter jar if you have one of these for doing kombucha or whatever. Um, or you could just do it if, like really small batches in one or two liter jars. Um, and for all of you out there that don't know liters, just substitute the word quart for liter and um, gallon for four liter. <laughs> right, got it. Okay, so um, you've got your spices, your dill, your bay leaf all of that good stuff inside your jar. Then you stuff it with your cucumbers. And sometimes I actually layer this with onions too, like I'll slice some onions and layer them. Um, people are pretty particular about how they like their, their pickles done. So I'll get as many in a jar as I can. 
really squeezing them in. I try to get every little nook in there. Oh no, I have one in here that like filled. Okay. Uh, squish it down at the top. Okay, so I don't want any of my cucumbers poking up out of the jar, right? Um, looks like I have enough for another liter there, but that's fine. Um, measuring your salt. So your brine is very important. Um, brine is the, the salt water that's going to help preserve your pickles. So um, I've got my scale here. I'll show you my scale. I've got my scale here, um, and I just have you know, a cheapy bought on Amazon digital scale. And so you need something that you can read in grams. Um, so I'm gonna take some time to do the math. Um, you want a 5% brine. And so that means sometimes I'm a little bit, um, just kind of like scoop it and throw it in for recipes. But for pickling cucumbers particularly, you want a 5% brine. And so that means five grams for every 100 milliliters or 50 grams for every liter. Um, I'm gonna do two liters, so that means I need 100 grams of salt. So that's just my quick, thanks for bearing with me, that was my quick like doing math on the fly thing. Um, so I'm actually measuring my salt. I use coarse salt and so measurements in volume for me are quite different than they are by weight. And I just use coarse salt because seriously that's what I'm used to. I, I have this around for cooking and I like this brand of salt. This is the brand of salt I'm using by the way. Um, I measure a little bit too much into there. Almost. Okay. Great. Um, and then a little trick I do uh, to help this dissolve a little better is just to put some hot water into the salt. Make sure you do this in a shatterproof jar and give it a good stir. And never put hot water onto your onto your brine pickles. Don't want to do that. Um, I'm going to cool it down with some filtered cold water here. Off camera I've got my um, water filter right beside me. And so keep doing a really good stir. And this gray salt, you can see the minerals in it. You can see that it looks like oh, seawater. All right. So I dissolved all of the salt into one liter of water and then I'll add one more liter of water. Makes sense, right? Okay, my math was not absolutely bang on. That means I have a slightly higher percentage of salt in this one because I couldn't quite fit that last liter in there. Um, my math is imperfect. It's fine. Whatever. It's better to go a little bit more salt than not enough salt in your pickles. Seriously. Okay. So now I've got this beautiful jar of pickles. Well, cucumbers, which are about to be pickled. Um, and here's the thing. You can top this with many different items. Um, I'll show you some relish that I have going right now. I'm just going to pause this and show you some relish that I've got going on. I'm back. Ta-da. Right. So this is some fermenting cucumber relish that I made. And this is how easy of a fermenting system that I do with this jar. So I bought one of these pickling like lids, I guess it was called a pickle pipe or something like that. Um, Oh, a pickle pipe was one of those silicone things. Anyway, I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, you put an airlock into it and then you put it onto a wide mouth mason jar, right? Um, I found that to be kind of cumbersome and honestly, I can't keep all the pieces together. So I have used this uh, in a different way and that's that this is just closed. It doesn't have a perfect seal and that means it can let some of the carbon dioxide gas out. That's perfect. I love it. Um, and here, just with clean fingers, I'm going to show you I use one of these glass weights. Some people buy what's called a pickle pebble. I'm just gonna rinse it off so I can show you properly. This is one of those Welks jars inserts or Wex jar inserts. And so I put the jar insert on top 
and that is enough of a weight for this. And then I put the lid on. How perfect is that? So that's one way. If you had this filled up with dill pickles, it would work just the same way, except it's a little tricky to keep that wax jar on top. The way that I'm gonna do this one, um, I'll have to do this off camera because I don't have my cabbage yet, but um, I'm gonna get a cabbage leaf and I put the whole cabbage leaf um, inside and really tuck it in on the sides. And then I just loosely, I don't completely seal this. Some people do, um, but I really don't want to trap carbon dioxide in here. So another tip for, for crunchy pickles is don't trap the gas inside. You don't want fizzy pickles. It will actually explode the vegetable cells and then you'll end up with like a mushy mess. So don't trap air in, but get something that has relatively little airflow. So I just leave this loose with my cabbage weight on top and then I put a, um, like a cloth over top of that with a rubber band so that we don't get any sort of fruit flies. Um, and then I just check it every three or four days. I'll skim any sort of foam that happens on the top and um, or if you get the calm yeast, that kind of white layer on top, not ideal, but it's not a total loss. So if you do get that, just keep on skimming it. And um, I found that my last batch of pickles worked, uh, it was half sour in seven days and fully sour in 10 days. So um, again, to keep the crunch, make sure you trim the flower end Make sure you use the right proportion of salt to water. So you want 5% brine or more. And uh, don't trap the air into the jar. Some recipes say to put the lid on tight. Don't do that because you're gonna explode little vegetable fibers and get really gross pickles. And that would be sad. Um, if you do get a pickle that is less than perfectly crunchy but is still good, um, make it into relish. There's no reason that you couldn't just whiz it up in a food processor and make relish out of it and make tartar sauce out of it um, or just chop it up and put it into your next batch of um, like beet soup or something like that. So it's not a total loss. Sometimes things just go differently than planned, but I hope this was helpful for you to um, just get cracking on that project that you've wanted to do for a while. Take care.